the Prophet ﷺ, one of the intriguing things, Ibn Khaldun said that the Prophet ﷺ did not come to bring us medicine. He came to bring us a revelation to draw us near to our Lord and to be able to be in the world with intelligence. But he said, but he brought the principles of medicine. In fact, in the verse in the Quran, Kulu wa sharabu wa la tusrifu innu la yuhibbul musrifin. When one of the Greek physicians heard this verse, which says, "Eat and drink, but not to excess," for surely God loves not those who do things to excess, he said, "Your prophet didn't leave anything for Galen. Lam yatruk nabiyyik shay'an li jalinus." We know now that 80%, this is according to the National Institutes of Health, that 80% of illnesses are directly related to what people eat, what they imbibe, when they smoke, when they drink, when they overeat, when they eat foods that are bad for them. And yet so little of our medical education is directed towards dietary guidelines. Very few physicians have more than three units in nutrition. And yet nutrition is so important to the health of a human being. Why have we neglected that aspect? One of the quickest ways to reverse cardiac disease is to go on a radical diet for a period of time, which is largely a plant-based diet. And this has been proven at the, the finest institutions, medical institutions in, in, in America. Um, so why isn't this being prescribed? Why do we do, they say, oh, that's too radical. And yet sawing a person's sternum open, <laughs> taking a vein from their leg and sewing it onto their heart is not radical. The idea that people are helpless and they can't comply, non-compliance, you have to teach people, teach people how to eat. Teach people how to live. Our Prophet ﷺ, once a man came to him and he said, Ashtaki sadri ya Rasulullah. He put his hand on his chest and he said, Inna ka maf'ud. You have a heart problem. It's amazing. It's like he scanned his chest. And he said, you have a heart problem. He said, Ithab ila harith ibn kalada fa innuhu yataqabbab. Go to al harith ibn kalada because he knows how to treat these things. So he, he referred him to a cardiologist. Right? Harith ibn al-Kalada is the one who said, and because the Prophet zakkahu katabi, because the Prophet said this, it's as if it's a hadith, and it's recorded in our tradition as a hadith. The Prophet ﷺ was reported to have said, Al-Ma'idatu baytu da wal himyatu ra'su dawa The stomach is the source of illness, and diet is the basis of the cure. This is, this is in our tradition. The Prophet ate very little. He was not somebody who ate a lot. He actually had a semi-vegetarian diet. Uh, months would go by and they saw no cooked food in his house. This is well known in the seerah. Sayyidina Omar, during his period, he actually prohibited eating meat two days in a row. He considered it to be unhealthy. This is in our tradition. We now know that meat is actually not good for you constantly to be eating meat. And it's actually good to go through periods of hunger. We know now that the body was designed to go through periods of famine. And hence, Ramadan is a time when you're actually supposed to cut down on your food. You should lose weight. And yet Muslims gain weight in Ramadan. I mean, these are, these are the contradictions of our uh, community. But our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in a hadith, and there's two hadiths in the Muwatta about meat. One of them is Sayyidina Umar said, إِيَّاكُمْ وَاللَّحْمْ فَإِنَّ لَهُ الْبَرَاوَةَ كَبَرَاوَةَ الْخَمْرِ Beware of meat because it has an addiction like the addiction of wine. The people get addicted to it and then they can't eat anything if it doesn't have meat in it. In, uh, in the book uh, uh, Nibawi of uh, Imam al-Dhahabi, he mentions that Aisha actually was so knowledgeable in medicine and her cousin Hisham asked her, How, where did you learn all this medicine? She said, I used to listen to the Prophet's discussions with the doctors. So the Prophet was very interested in, in healing. And the Quran talks about the Shifa. The Shifa is, is part of our tradition. We know now the benefits of honey. I'll give you one example. And I'm not opposed to allopathic medicine. I think allopathic medicine is one of the great gifts. The Ottomans actually, the, the English got vaccination. Everybody thinks Jenner discovered vaccinations. No, Lady Montague, who was the wife of the Turkish ambassador, and you can Google this on Wikipedia, 
She, Lady Montague, who was the wife of the Turkish uh, ambassador from England, used to go to the bathhouses and notice that none of the women had pocked skin. And it was so strange because in England it was very common for women to have the effects of smallpox. And she asked the women, don't you ever, doesn't anybody get smallpox here? And they said, no, no, we treat our children. And she said, how do you do that? And, and they took her to somebody that did it and they used to take from the pox and they would give the child the smallpox and they would get this, uh, this mild uh, version of it and then they would have uh, uh, immunity to it. She was the first woman to get English children. Her children were given these um, vaccinations and then she took them back to England. Initially, all of the English physicians were opposed to it, but eventually it caught on. And so the Muslims actually were the first people that were practicing vaccination. But if you look at the vaccination schedules today, it's beyond belief what they're giving children. You know, so many vaccinations. And this is a multi-billion dollar industry. And, and uh, there are many other aspects. And so I really feel like the Muslims, we should be at the forefront of looking at a lot of these uh, alternative dietary things. We know in New Zealand, and I did these, I had, uh, I got in contact with the man that did these initial studies on Manuka honey in a burn unit. And the incredible healing properties of honey for burn patients, actually using honey, that their, their recovery time is much faster than using traditional debriding de the wounds and also um, using uh, certain toxic uh, elements that, that end up actually uh, prolonging uh, the healing process. But honey is this incredible gift. For years I suffered because whenever I get tired, I get bronchitis. It's just you know, for years I suffered from this. And I would have sometimes a cough that lasted uh, three months. And I had uh, an internist who told me, you have to do something, you're gonna damage your lungs, I wanna put you on steroids, because nothing was working. And, and somebody gave me a remedy that she got out of Tubba Nebui. Very simple, it was honey and turmeric and cinnamon. What's all I cinnamon? Hit the care that he took for his body. He walked every day. We, I was with a, a physician. I was with uh, a friend of mine from Saudi Arabia who supports um, di diabetes research because in, in Saudi Arabia, one of the greatest epidemics that they have is type 2 diabetes because people don't walk anymore and they drink sugared tea all day. And so if you're over 40, invariably you will have diabetes in Saudi Arabia. And increasingly young people getting it because of the obesity crises that we're seeing in the Gulf states. But we were with uh, one of the leading centers for the study of diabetes, which is at the University of San Francisco. And we met with the top researcher there. He's a Hindu American physician. And this man asked him, what's the, what's the most cutting edge thing in type 2 diabetes? He said, Khadid, if I tell you, you're just going to laugh. He said, what? He said, walking 10,000 steps every day. He said, that is the best thing that you can do for type 2 diabetes. Just go out and walk 10,000 steps. So just as an experiment, when I was in Mecca, I took a step counter and I did Umrah. It was 10,000 steps. I, I'm not making this up. It just amazed me. It was 10,000 steps. And we know that the body is designed to walk 10,000 steps a day. That's a couple of hours. It's about an hour and a half of walking. And yet people don't walk. If you walk, walking is one of the best treatments for depression especially walking in natural uh, environments, like amongst trees, in mountains, just walking, you will begin to feel better. Kierkegaard said, I never was depressed except that I took a walk and by the end of a long walk, I felt so much better. Th th these are the things that we know. This is called binary therapy in some traditions of just walking. <inaudible> Those who walk humbly on the earth. And this is how God described who? Ibadur <inaudible> Rahman. The servants of the merciful who walk on the earth humbly. The Arabs say, Al Harwalatu Dawa'un la yukhti. That brisk walking is a treatment that will never fail.